Hello, my name is Graham Dunlin and I am the CEO of Uns Farms here in Dubai. Some of you may be wondering who I am and why I am talking. Well, a brief background into myself. I started my own company back in 1980 and from then I have been the general manager or a director of several companies, taking them through from where they was to the future and streamlining the businesses. I left college in 1980 and started my own company, turned it into a large company. Then the recession in the early 1990s hit and we closed the company down and I then went working for other companies helping to streamline their operations. I have been in the background of the industry, mostly concentrating on growing the crops. I'm a fourth generation grower and proud to say my son Matthew is now the fifth generation and taking warehouse vertical growing to the next level. My first contribution to advancing hydroponics was way back in the 1980s. My nursery was used as a showcase for the first computer controlled irrigation system. I was also one of the first growers to grow cherry tomatoes. Every grower used to grow tomatoes or beefsteak. I grew cherry tomatoes and we had to grade tomatoes. So I helped a company called Griefer develop the first cherry tomato grader which could grade from colour to 20 shades of red and size grade to one millimetre increments. So this was the second contribution to the future of growing and hydroponics. So we had all the data for growing tomatoes way back then, but none of it applied to cherry tomatoes. So any data on the tomatoes was completely irrelevant. It come down to the grower thinking outside the box to grow this new crop to change the data that we already had. We went from nothing to grow 5,000 punnets of cherry tomatoes a day. That meant we had to promote, we had to sell a completely new product line. We ended up, we was picking 110,000 tomatoes every single day to produce 5,000 punnets of tomatoes. We harvested 12,000 heads of lettuce. We did 10,000 heads of celery. This was daily. So with the introduction of hydroponics, it made all of these crops easier to control. As when we was growing in soil, throughout the year, the soil varied in temperature, so the roots varied in temperature, so the growth of the crop, the speed of the crop, all changed throughout the season. So we had to be well aware of that to keep a continuity of crop. So hydroponics, made the planning and the continuity a lot, lot easier. So we've defined that hydroponics is not really new. Data collection is not new. It's just we did not make all of this public as commercial growers. So where do we define the future of hydroponics? Well, we have to go that stage further and redesign the future. Greenhouses went from structures that grew plants in season and when the season allowed to growing plants out of season using heating and cooling. The introduction of CO2 further enhanced the crops. LED lighting is now used as a standard in commercial greenhouse growing. They have supplementary top lights, LEDs. They have interlighting, LEDs. So greenhouse growers grow with the free sun, but they still use LEDs which take energy. That's my point. That brings us to the economics of warehouse growing. Again, warehouse growing is not new. The picture shows a system way back in the 1990s, only four levels high, but it is growing inside a warehouse using lighting, using temperature control, climate control. So like Tesla and the electric car, warehouse growing is not new. We are using now technology that has been refined, redesigned from the technology from the 1990s 
that growers used to grow warehouse crops. So what is the difference? What do we lack? Well today we lack the growers. People say we have all the data, you do not need to be a farmer, but it is the growers who think outside the box. If we grow crops that are not normally grown inside a warehouse under LED lights, how do you get the data from it? This is coming from the grower. The grower redesigns the crops, the grower grows the crops. We then take the data from this for everybody else to follow. We as industry leaders, we as pioneers in the field, need to innovate and take this to the next level. Being a fourth generation grower, I believe it stands me in good stead. I have over 25, 30 years of redesign in the future of growing. So I think I'm well placed to do this with hydroponics and commercial growing by bringing some of the old ways and innovating the crops that my granddad used to grow and bringing them back to the future. Many of the crops that we grew way back then can be readapted and taken back and used for warehouse growing. After all, we took them from low greenhouses and readapted them to modern high greenhouses. Back in the 70s and 80s, we didn't have tomatoes that had 54 or 80 trusses on them. So we can take these crops back, redesign these crops, and make them use for warehouse growing. So hydroponics is not new. Way back in the early, in the late 80s, early 90s, we used rock wool. Commercial growers collected data. It was just not made public. Greenhouses have some of the most advanced automation that we have seen. We need to use this, redesign it to work for us. 11 years ago, vertical growing was seen as a new, th new item. We built a vertical grow system in the UK back in 2008 and opened it and launched it to the public in 2009. It was fully automated from loading, unloading, irrigation, filtration, climate control. It was a reality, way ahead of its time. I was told it will never catch on. Well, it has caught on. Indoor growers must go back, use this technology that we used then and introduce it into some of the grow systems that we have now. So we've defined that the technology is over 11 years old. So what is the difference? People do not come from a commercial growing background. How do they know to design an automated system using the technology if they do not know that technology exists? It's like me trying to design a mobile phone. Yes, I can do it, but it would be way behind Apple and Samsung. Like Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, all saw their industries, all saw the future and the way forward. I see horticulture in the same way. In the video in 2009, I say we can grow in a hot climate, save food miles, urban growing, all new words back in 2009 common as anything today. People laughed at me then, said it would never catch on. But everything I said back then is now a reality. Hydroponics, the future. But we can but we see can the, see the whole, whole concept has been, been in, in any environment, any environment from a really hot really climate to a cold climate, because we can put an insulated building fully computer control for, for the environment inside, so it'll be a it'll perfect growing environment, environment for the plant, the plant humidity, humidity, heat, light, light everything in perfect conditions. Condition. The other concept the other for the vertical crop is that we can put it in a warehouse on an industrial scale for what we call urban growing, so we could grow for the local communities, the local supermarkets, so we can cut down on the food miles, the food goes, so it's a good way of implementing fresh vegetables, fresh salad crops into local communities. So again, we defined that that was 11 years ago, and only now am I growing in Dubai, in a warehouse, urban growing. Wow, I really did see the future 11 years ago. 
The picture on the right was used five weeks ago in Haughty Daily to promote the tech behind UAE's road to self-sufficiency. So imagine how proud I felt that something I helped build over 11 years ago people still thought is good enough to use as a showcase for the industry today. When we was building this I was often asked what plan B was. I am always asked what is plan B? What if? When I designed a cooling system for Bahrain back in 2014 which allowed us to grow tomatoes throughout the year in a greenhouse I was asked what is plan B? I was asked this when we built Badia Farms, the first vertical farm in Dubai. My reply is always the same. I am doing something others have not done, so how do I know what will not work until it does not work? When and if that happens, I will solve the problem and not go to plan B. If I go to plan B, then why even bother with plan A? We are building for the future. As of February 2020, I joined Uns Farms as the CEO to take them to the next level of warehouse growing and to be help build the company into one of the biggest and the best in the GCC. We are now growing gourmet baby leaf salads inside a warehouse which are grown for flavour and texture. The produce is in all of the leading supermarkets here in Dubai, Spinney's, Waitrose, Gibson's Online, Union Co-op, many other supermarkets. The reason why ours is so popular is it has some flavour, has some texture. We grow a variety of mixes, a gourmet mix, a signature mix, spicy mix, healthy mix. All have different leaves, all have a distinct, unique flavour. Uns Farms are intent on bringing the flavour back to salads, just like it was in the olden days. People are having that wow factor back to solid salads. We are bringing old growing methods using future technology. Again, the Tesla move. Uns Farms grow in ebon flood trays and we grow on racks that are seven, eight levels high, 19 meters long. We have some 5,700 square meters of growing surface area. That makes Uns Farms one of the largest warehouse vertical growers in the UAE. This is reality, commercial growing facility, not an R&D facility. We grow crops that the consumer wants, the consumer enjoys. We are bringing that taste, that quality, that wow factor back to salads. So, what are Uns Farms doing? We are growing for the future. We are trying different crops so that we can grow other crops inside the warehouse, bringing the future of salads. We have no data on this. We have to be growers. We have to collect these crops. We have to collect the data. Then when we have done this, others can follow suit. Yes, we need data. We always need data, but data is not a grower. A grower has to grow the crops, the future crops, the future of hydroponics is the grower, the data will follow, then the future and everybody else can follow suit. In 2008 I was told it would not work. I am told now my ideas will not work. So five, ten years we will have to wait and see and see if people are following me again. My name is Graham Dunlin, the future of hydroponics. Thank you very much.